In this video, I'll be covering how to report your max weekly average on a DMR. I'm going to go to Edit View Variables, and I'm going to set up a variable that calculates the weekly averages so that it makes it easy that I can just report the max of that variable on my DMR. I'm going to be doing Effluent TSS, so I bring up my variable browser, click on Effluent, and I have a TSS variable here that I need to take the average of, the weekly average. So the first step is I'm just going to copy this variable. I'm going to put it at location 4044. And I'm going to name it Effluent TSS Weekly Average. It's in milligrams per liter. And I'm going to go ahead and make it a calculation. Go to Equation. And now the question is, how do I calculate that? So I'm going to go ahead and hit F1, and I'm going to go to Search, and I'm going to type in Weekly Average. I'm going to look through, and it pulls up a lot of uh, options here, but one that I know is a Math Toolbox function I'm looking for is called WAVGN. So I'm going to click on that to bring it up, and it says returns a weekly average of a specified variable. The question is, what is the week? So click here for a table demonstrating the different week definitions available. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So these are all the ways that we can group the data in a week. We can do Monday through Sunday, not a very common one. The most common one is Sunday through Saturday. And why that's important is we will put the weekly average for the last week of the month in on a Saturday. So if Saturday is the third of the month of the next month, that weekly average will be reported in the next month, not the current month. Some other states specify that you have to do always the first week is the first through the seventh, so forth and so on. Again, the most common is Sunday through Saturday with the weekly average being placed on the Saturday. Got that. So now I know what my formula is. I'm going to type in WAVG7 for Sunday through Saturday, open parentheses, and then I'm going to conditionally refer to the variable. So the variable in question here is effluent TSS. And the reason why I conditionally refer to it is the formula, first of all, calls for conditional. But if I only take the, the test, uh, the TSS, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, this will calculate the average of those three days. If you refer to it as a V, it's going to see it as uh, a blank on a Tuesday, and it'll say, well, there is no weekly average for that week. So I type in my formula, and I click Check Equation. And it's placed in there for me. Since it's a valid equation, now I'm going to go to limits. And I've got a couple of limits set up already. That's because for my normal effluent TSS variable, I had my daily max and my monthly maximum limit already set, and that was copied. So I'm going to highlight those rows, click delete. And now I'm going to add a new limit in. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to choose my weekly max limit. What that does is it comes in here and it says what's the grouping and this is what's interesting is that the grouping it says is value and the stat is none in other words I'm gonna compare every value in this variable to the limit and let's say my regulatory or my permit limit was 35 it says if if a value for this variable is greater than 35 I'm gonna count it as a violation so since I've already calculated the weekly average I'm only gonna have one value per week in my database that is what I want to compare I don't need to choose a, a grouping of week here. I could do Sunday through Saturday again and choose average. This would do the same thing. This would calculate the average of the one number for that week and it would actually do you no good. So in this case again, since I've already calculated the average, I do a value stat none greater than 35. Every, va every value calculated by WIMS will be compared to that value. Go ahead and click OK. My limit is in there. So I'm going to go ahead and exit out of here. I'm going to go into a data manager, data entry forms, and I have a form set up called TSS. And here it is. So I go ahead and open that form up because I want to review that data. I'm going to go back a couple of months here and look at my TSS effluent data. 
I want to insert my new weekly average variable in here so I can see what's going on. So I go ahead and click insert column. I go to my TSS weekly average variable, double click on it to bring it into the form. I don't have anything there yet because it's a new variable and I haven't calculated. So I'm going to go ahead and refresh the calculations on this form. What I'm going to see is, is that I have a 15 on one week, a 36, then a 37. So I actually have two weeks that are greater than my 35. Notice also that this 15 really includes data from March, the end of March coming into this week. But this is this 15 is going to get reported for this month because the Saturday was in this month. So if I go back and look, I still don't have my calculations here, so I'll calculate this month. So in this particular case, every Saturday gets calculated, but these days, at least as far as the weekly average are, is concerned, is reported in the next month. So I got a couple of months of my numbers here, so let's go ahead and put it into the report. I close up my data entry form, and then design spread reports. Open up a report I have for Alabama, uh, the EDMR, where we can copy and paste the data into the state's website. So go ahead and click OK. And I've started to set up this report, but when I had to report right here the max weekly average, I didn't know how to do it. So now I have that variable set up. So what I want to do is simply go to Locate, and I want to summarize the data for the report date. So I'm going to set the report dates to a month, and it will pull that up for me. So I go to Locate Report Summary go in here and choose my TSS weekly average and I want to report the maximum of that variable. That's all I need to do. I click OK and I see a 41 for March. I see a 37 for April. So that's picking the one number out of those four or five weekly averages that we had in that month. Now I want to locate the number of violations. So what I'm going to do is go back to locate number of violations or number of exceedances, I'm going to pick my weekly average variable and it's going to say, okay, you want to count based on that variable we know you have that limit, we're going to count those. Go ahead and click OK and I get two. I may want to center it to make it look a little better. So two means two of the five weeks in April were in violation. That's correct. Again, if I look at my data entry form, going back to it, go back to April. I'm going to insert that my TSS weekly average column again so I can look at it. And I see that I have one two weeks, my max is 37, and two violations that are over this 35. Reduce this down. There's my 37. There's my two exceedances on that weekly average. Go ahead and save this report. And that's how you report your max weekly average on your DMR or any other situation that you need to. Thank you very much.